This is GTV. This note's for you. Bravo. Ken, take this. Can you believe this thing exists? There was an actual MC Hammer impersonator out there, and his name is MC Comia. There's a lot to unpack here, so you want to stick around. It's going to be a fun ride. I was actually a fan of MC Hammer, aka Stanley Burrell, as far back as the summer of 1990, when You Can't Touch This became a massive hit, and MC Hammer, pants and all, became all the rage. Even though fuzz pop has always been my favorite genre of music, I stood by MC Hammer through his ups and downs as each album was released over the course of his career. Yes, really. Why? Well, there's one reason, and it's a very personal one. MC Hammer, much like me, wore glasses, and he wasn't really ashamed of it. That he could pull off those funky dance moves while keeping those specs on always impressed me. And if you grew up wearing glasses, you might have been picked on, called names, and told by everyone that you'll never be cool. I mean, does anyone remember the cool kid in school wearing glasses? Of course not, because it didn't happen. So to see someone who wore glasses become the biggest star in the world, you can't help but root for him, and hope that someday, that could be you. The only other star from that time I can remember who proudly wore rims was Weird Al Yankovic, who I also loved, and still do to this day. He had eye surgery to keep from going blind, as I did too when I was 31. But you know what they say, you can take the geek out of the guy, but you can't take away those daily beatings from 3rd to 12th grade. Weird Al did take his own shot at You Can't Touch This in 1992. It was funny, but someone had already beat him to the punch as MC Comia appeared on the scene in 1991. On the surface, it certainly looks like something Weird Al would do. An album cover designed to look exactly like the MC Hammer album, Please Hammer, Don't Hurt Him. In fact, the album is called Please Komier, Don't Hurt Him. It's the brainchild of Japanese comedian Takayasu Komiya. Prior to MC Komiya, he had been a bit actor, appearing in a few shows and commercials, but not really having any star power. But that all changed when he woke up one day and said, Hey, let's copy MC Hammer and see what that does for me. Now, there are a few things to take into consideration here. Japanese media is tightly controlled, and it's also very intertwined. Only a few conglomerates exist, and they run everything. It's very common to see an actor appear in a talk show, movie, commercial, and have a song or even a video game in some cases, with everything owned by the same company. So when an on-screen talent like Komiya gets an idea, they follow through, and they really do it to death. Komiya got to do a spot on the Tokoro and Toshiro 1991 NTV Academy Awards show. Keep in mind this isn't the real Academy Awards, just a Japanese parody of it. And as such, everything is meant to spoof on something else. Here's where MC Komier was born. He performed the parody of MC Hammer's You Can't Touch This, called Kentaiki. What is Kentaiki? Well, uh... Kentaiki is really hard to translate directly to English, but it's just the feeling of being stuck in a rut, unable to get back into the groove, and everybody knows it. Oh, Hammer. Do you know what they did to what you did to Rick James's song? So anyway, the TV performance was a hit, and naturally there's a CD to follow up. On April 5th, 1991, the CD, Please Call Me Air, Don't Hurt Em, was released. Much like every other TV talent that puts out a novelty song, it was destined to be a one-hit wonder. First, just for being so weird and just cashing in on a hot craze, but also, not long after this CD was released, the persona would be dropped as Komiya would move on to the next project. But the CD had five tracks, and all of them were pretty good, at least if you were trying to make fun of MC Hammer. There isn't just one you can't touch this parody. No, there's Kentaiki and Kentoshi. Now, if you thought Kentaiki was weird, Kentoshi turns off the crazy meter so high, it breaks off the knob. Kentoshi is an old Japanese word meaning envoy, specifically Japanese priests, scholars, and higher-ups who traveled to China about 1200 years ago and helped bring written language and cultural advancements to Japan. Yeah, I know, right? I can't understand it either. Maybe a Western equivalent is writing a song about the Renaissance, I suppose. But the song goes on and on about how monks and scholars and what have you brought literature and culture to the land of Wa. But that's not all. There's also Here Comes the Comier, which is a little more straightforward and not as crazy, but still just as self-serving as the original. It's mostly incoherent nonsense interspersed with MC Comier going on about his own greatness. 
Then there's the karaoke version of you can't touch this, slash kentaiki, slash kentoshi. That's a given in Japan. But none of this compares at all to the original track, Praise of MC Hammer. The song is mostly babbling about how MC Komier wants to invite MC Hammer to Japan and what they do when they hang out together. But yeah, it's a little funny when you think about it through the prism of how 80s, 90s Japan loved American culture. And they still do. But in that bubble era, it was an obsession. And if you were here back then, you know what I mean. So in the end, while it may seem like they were making fun of MC Hammer, I guess MC Komia is actually a fan just like I was and still am. With that in mind, I say, if you can't beat them, join them. Problem. Uh-oh, 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 here comes Kajillionaire. Uh-oh, 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 here comes Kajillionaire. Yes, this is a mission that I'm on, taking on YouTube all on my own, so don't. Talk to me about your level of quality when you can't even live up to that of GTV. Dun, 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 dun.